So in this video, we're going to be talking about the body effect. And the body effect is a modification of the threshold voltage, a modification of VT. That's all it is. Um, and the only reason it exists is because circuit designers really aren't very good semiconductor physicists. Uh, and what exactly do I mean by that? Well, in all of our previous derivations, in all of our previous work, um, we've assumed, I'm just going to draw the three terminal MOS structure here. Uh, in all of our previous work, we assumed that this gate voltage VG, we assumed that this was applied relative to the body or relative to the substrate. Uh, I'm going to call it body in this video because it's this is the body effect video. But as circuit designers, in reality, we much prefer to apply the voltage relative to the source. So let's say that this is the source. Um, so we much prefer to apply an input voltage like this, VGS. It's just physically much easier. It gives us much more design freedom. So we're not applying the voltage relative to the body. We're applying it relative to the source. And just for completeness here, I'm going to draw in the, the drain as well, for the drain voltage. So that's a problem, uh, right? Because everything we did assumed that we were applying a voltage relative to the body. So what happens when our input voltage, uh, VGS, so what happens when we apply an input voltage VGS relative to the gate and the source? Well, if the source is grounded, then we've got no problem because there's no difference in potential between the source and the body. But if our VS is not grounded, Let's say the VS is at some some other voltage, say VS is one volt or something, then we've got a problem because our derivation of threshold voltage assumed that a voltage was applied between the gate and the body. So we've got this formula for it, right? It goes like uh, two epsilon silicon, throw in a QNA, and then two times the initial uh, Fermi potential of the substrate. And then we've got some other terms. We've got to uh, we've got to add another two phi of p, and we've got to add a uh, or subtract magnitude of VMS. And sorry, this first one was all over uh, C ox oxide capacitance. And so remember, this term, this first term, had to do with the depletion region. So this had to do with the depletion region very near the gate. Uh, and I'm implicitly assuming that this is a, a p-type substrate just because that's what we've been dealing with this whole time. So this depletion region here uh, is, is what causes this term. This is the condition for inversion. And this is our... Uh, initial band bending. And I'm ignoring the term uh, in involving bound oxide charge just to make this conceptually simpler. And so if we want to find a difference in threshold voltage, um, this term isn't going to be relevant because it's constant. Once we hit 2 phi fp, we achieve inversion. Um, this is not, uh, not going to be relevant to our analysis. Similarly, phi ms isn't going to change. So uh, the only term we have to worry about is this one on the very left. And so our delta vt is going to be uh, whatever our threshold voltage is uh, now when we're instead applying this source voltage um, minus what it was initially. So I'm just going to call that vt0. And we can plug in some numbers. Um, or we can we can plug in the the variable that we know so two blah 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 q and a um, now instead of two phi fp uh, this is the depletion region width this remember was initially phi s before we assumed that it was a, we were able to replace it with two phi fp uh, but now we're going to have a different phi s because Phi s is basically uh, the voltage 
between this edge of the channel and the body. So this is going to be different. And this depletion region, this depletion region is going to be larger uh, because of this applied source voltage. So uh, we're just going to replace 2 phi fp with phi s. And then our initial threshold voltage, uh, oh, this is over Cox. And our initial threshold voltage was just with 2 phi f. So 2 epsilon silicon QNA times 2 phi f over Cox. And this is kind of painful to look at. So uh, I'm just going to lump all these constants out front. Uh, so I'm going to write this just as a term gamma uh, times the square root of psi s minus gamma times the square root of 2 phi fp where gamma is just a constant introduced for convenience sake, because I don't want to be writing it all the time. Um, and that's just two epsilon silicon times QNA all over Cox. So our equation is now much prettier. Um, it's just, if we factor it, it's just gamma times the surface potential uh, minus this initial uh, surface potential, the surface potential without the source voltage. So we just need to figure out what is psi s. Um, well, if we take a look back at our diagram, we see that let's assume that the channel is inverted. So let's assume that we have electrons floating around everywhere in here. So everywhere in the channel, along with the depletion region. And let's assume that the source voltage is at the same value as the drain voltage for now, just to simplify things. So let's assume they're both, say, uh, one volt. Then what is the surface potential going to be? What is the potential between this edge of the oxide semiconductor interface and the bulk or the body going to be? Well, if, it's, if, if we're talking about the edge where all these electrons are, that's just going to be the potential that we're applying here. Uh, Vs or Vd um, plus the initial uh, plus the potential that we had already uh, built into the system without applying that Vs. So it's going to be this potential difference. It's going to be Vs minus Vb plus that initial potential that we had. Or we can just write this as Vsb. And here Vs is one volt, so this is just one volt here. Uh, and then in order to get the phi, so psi s would be here one volt plus two phi fp. But in general, we can write that just as two phi fp plus vsb. Oh, not that, no, no square root yet, plus vsb. And so we can just plug that into our equation. So the change in threshold voltage, delta Vt, is just equal to gamma times 2 phi fp plus Vsb minus 2 phi fp. And we're done. That is the body effect. Um, it's not, I don't really like to think of it as an actual effect because it's just an artifact of how we are applying the voltages in this system. So because we're applying a VGS, and not a VGB or a voltage between the gate and the channel, um, then it causes this sort of weird artifact having to do with um, the source voltage modifying the, the psi s. So ultimately, you can trace everything back to this surface potential psi s. Now, what if VD is not the same as VS? Um, well, then. Uh, depending on the region of operation, we, we may have to, depending on how this channel is distributed, we may have to worry about that, but we pretend that we don't have to, uh, because this is already uh, already complicated things enough. So we just, we just tend to ignore that, and we're typically justified in doing so. And so we finally ended up with this equation. It's, it's reasonably nice um, in terms of this, what's called the body effect coefficient. And the voltage between the source and the body VSB. And so that, that concludes this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks.